loves the business. And uh, here's one of your favorites. Oh my God. You know, there's only thing, one thing that could make this worse. Uh, let's see. Uh, what would that be? Don't let him wrestle Chris Jericho. Don't let him wrestle Chris Jericho. Okay. Don't let him wrestle Chris Jericho. And here's why I hate Chris Jericho matches on the network. Mm. Cause they're going to dub in his fucking WWE music. Mm. It's awful. Here's what it sounds like. We're in Canada. We 224 and three quarter pounds. He's the WCW Cruiserweight Champion, Brian Hart. So, break mm. the walls down? Come on, man. Hey, but this was a great time for Jericho, though. No, I creatively, thought. this was my favorite Jericho. You know, yeah. I, I was a big fan of the heel WCW Jericho. Out of everything he's done, this, to me, is still his best stuff. And, you know, I know he's still main eventing pay-per-views and, you know, rock shows and blah, blah, blah. But this is, you know, it's sort of like my favorite Hulk Hogan is the one I grew up on. Well, my favorite Chris Jericho is the one I grew up on. Right. Can you believe he's still doing this, by the way? He's incredible. You know, I don't know if you saw, but a lot of people were, were really, really negative about uh, his appearance at Double or Nothing. They thought he looked out of shape and he looked bloated and like he was prepared or taking care of himself. I didn't get that impression. And when I saw, you know, him tweeting out pictures of the bruises the next day, it's like the dude's got abs. How are we saying he's not in shit? Is that just people looking to shit on Jericho? People looking to shit on AEW, or just people who maybe resent the fact that he'll be 49 later this year and are still man no. eventing a pay-per-view Conrad, you know, this by now, because you are, you're so active into social media, people shit on things, right? That's what, that's what social media is about. They do. They just want to shit on things, and it's easy to shit on things when you are an unknown in back of a keyboard. It's easy to do that. So I, I, I take that with a grain of salt. Listen, Chris Jericho is heavier than now than he was what we're looking at right now, kissing the belt. But he's aged, and, and when you age, you get heavier. You do, and it's just the way it is. And you, you, your looks change, but the kid can still bump, man. He really can. He can still go. And he's still got that it factor about him. He's oh, still one of the biggest stars in the sport. Nobody's arguing that. I'm just saying yeah. it, it feels like there is this, you know, and some of it's just people drawing battle lines, you know, and, oh, I know. Oh, I don't like AEW. I like WWE. But then there is this, the contrarian fan who they mm -hmm. fucking hate everything. You know, right. you just scroll through their line, their, their, their Twitter feed. And it's looking like you're, it's almost like you just jumped into Lois's Twitter feed by accident, right? It's just, everything's negative and I hate everybody and everybody sucks. And but, but here's, here's how, here's why I discount some of this. And, and I'm sure some of the people, well, uh, most of the people who ate everything are chicken dicks anyway. Okay. I get that. You're, you're, you're afraid of your own shadow. You're not worth a fuck. So you got to be a troll. I get that. I understand that's, that's your cross to bear. You got to look yourself in the mirror. We don't have to fuck with you. Only thing we have to do is mute you or block you and you're gone from our lives. But also some of those tweets, I firmly believe this. And I want you to see if you agree with me or not. Some of those tweets are not legit tweets. Oh, are you saying that maybe the WWE is putting bots on this? Yes. I don't think WWE is putting bots on it. I'm going to shut that down. By okay. the way, since we're talking, I just Google imaged it. Yeah. And Jericho has abs. I mean, I understand that, you know, it's not the, the V cut or whatever. It, he's not, he didn't like a bodybuilder. I get it. But I mean, people who are saying the dude's not in shit. I just don't buy that. No, I don't either. So again, take that shit with a grain of salt. Right. And you know, it's worth mentioning dudes for, as we said, as we said, dudes, 48, Yeah. like realistically Hulk Hogan in this, in this movie we're about to watch or this match we're about to watch. Uh, he's not wrestling, but he's going to come out and do an appearance. Or I guess he isn't wrestling. Yet. Um, he's about that age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so when people are like, um, Oh, Jericho, this or that dude, this is competing at a high level at 49 is not out of the question anymore. Let me ask you about this too. And I, and I noticed this about the show. We are what we're about an hour over an hour into the show yep. and there's not been one promo done. Yeah. Not one interview. 
we went hot and cold on interviews. We would do them and then we didn't want to do them. And then we'd do them and didn't want to do them. We, we got into the mode where we didn't want to have them. What did you think? You, th- you think it could, it's good to not have them on a pay-per-view? I didn't like it. And here's why I didn't like it. What sold me the show was Nitro. Right. And, and, and I wanted what I couldn't get on Nitro, which does mean, you know, the payoffs for some of these matches and, and, and really competitive matches with clean finishes and blah, 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 that we get screw jobs and schmazzes for on TV. I get that. But like, I wanted more of a Jericho promo. I want to hear from Hulk Hogan on this show. Like there right. are certain things that I sort of expect. And I really enjoy from nitro that then come away from the pay-per-view, but I understand the thinking. The thinking is, well, no, those were all building, telling the story and building to this point. And now this is the climax. This is the payoff. But I think I would be more excited. I know I was, I was more excited in this era to go to a nitro than I was a pay-per-view. Right. Because nitro had the promos. Uh, but it also had, it felt like, Hey, they're competing with something else. Like they've got to have what's next. The element of surprise. I just felt like I was less likely to get surprised. If I came to a pay-per-view, I'm going to see good matches. I'm going to see longer matches, but if I want to like be a part of a happening and say, I was there when such and such happened or when so-and-so jumped shipped or whatever, I think I'd rather go to a nitro. Well, here's my thought on it. And, and does this motherfucker have a dry erase board in the front? Yeah. And, and he, and he, he thinks he's sharp, but he's an idiot because you can't read what his dry erase board says. Well, Jericho can, but our camera can. Yeah. And, but he wants the camera to be able to read it. That's the problem. I think promos are always needed because you want to be entertained and good promos entertain you. It doesn't always have to be about the wrestling. It's about talking. Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair and the back in the heyday of TBS, Jim Cornette, Arn Anderson, all those guys entertained you by their talk as much as they did by their work. And you just take the entertainment value, I think, out of it if you just give them two and a half hours of wrestling. And then you had G- you have Gene Okerlund, who was the greatest stick man ever. Fuck. I just I, I never did agree with that, ever. But there it was. It's about entertaining the fan and Jericho entertained us a little bit when he came out and he talked a little bit, but oh, well, that's my two cents. And, you know, uh, not, not uh, casting uh, uh, a shadow on AEW, but double or nothing didn't have any interviews in it. Did it had a couple of announcers on camera? Yeah. Yeah. And they had a couple of walk-ins, which were pretty good. They had JR walking in, they had Kenny Omega, you know, on the computer or whatever. And a couple of things that were pretty good little vignettes, Cody walking in and the, you know, with his dog, I, I, I it was all really cool. Uh, they had uh, Brandy come out and, you know, make the, the women's match an awesome match. That was cool. But man, the, the, the power of the promo, the power of the fucking promo, it's, it's lost. Well, you know, it's funny that we're talking about this too, because the world is talking about talk is Jericho where he had John Moxley on. Right. And Moxley, you know, was basically saying WWE creative sucks and he wasn't having fun doing it and he didn't want to do it anymore. And it didn't matter what they were going to offer him. It just wasn't fun for him. And they wanted him to say certain lines that he didn't want to say. And, you know, he had to give in on some, but he hated it and he, he didn't, you know, give in on others, but. He went on, uh, with Wade Keller for the torch, he being John Moxley. Mm-hmm. And he basically insinuated that if you can't do a promo, get the fuck out of WWE. Like you should be able to do your own promo a not a scripted promo, but just be your character and cut your promo. That's part of what being a wrestler is, but that's not what being a wrestler is like for the WWE. Like you don't have to go find your own bookings. You don't have to you know, design your own merch. You don't have to promote your next match. You don't have to think about what you're going to do in the match. The agent will tell you, and you don't have to think about what you're going to say in the promo. They'll hand you a script and you don't have to make your own gear. They got, they got a couple ladies in the back who will do that too. We need you to, um, be awake and sober and arrive on time. Yeah. That's kind of what WWE has become. And that's the criticism. Uh, but I think a lot of the superstars there would say, well, no, that's, 
those that's sour grapes. You've got to, you've got to find a way to make it your own and you've got to will it through and blah, blah, blah. But I think Moxley's point is it shouldn't have to be that hard. That's an extension of Vince being a control freak is all that is. Of course it is. Listen, I, and, and anybody who's a wrestling fan who acts like, and this is the other thing that is annoying me a little bit. People are online like, oh, Vince is out of touch. Vince sucks. Vince should step aside. Vince has ruined wrestling. And Dude. here's the thing. I get you're frustrated. I get it. I am too. There's things about every Monday that some of us don't like. I get it. But, uh, Vince McMahon's the reason I'm a wrestling fan. Mm. So it's real hard for me to get behind. He's ruined wrestling. Like he made it cool for me to watch in the beginning. Like, I, I, I never would I don't I shouldn't say never. I'm not sure that I would have ever become a wrestling fan had it not been for Vince McMahon. I fell in love with the Hulk Hogan character and you know, that, that Saturday morning. I mean, I, I just don't know that it would have gotten to me or it would have got a hold of me unless Vince McMahon had his, had his finger in the pie, so to speak. He made it mainstream. He took it out of, as I've read before, I think that on that sports illustrated article, he took it out of the smoky gymnasiums. And the, uh, the bingo halls, if I can use that or whatever, put it in the big arenas and made it a big time thing. And well, there the, you go. I mean, that's not exactly true because all of that had happened beforehand, but, but still he, he, he took it to another level, you know, right. we, we're splitting hairs about what that means, but sure. we can all agree that he took it to another level. And so when fans are just so quick to say, oh, fuck Vince, it's like, whoa, let's calm down on some of that. Like. I understand you didn't like the latest star Wars. Let's not motherfuck all of Disney that they've uh, Disney's right. done. Okay. For themselves. There's way more pluses than minuses. And you know, there's so many of my, so many of my favorite wrestling moments or memories happened on, on Vince McMahon's watch. So yeah. it's like, I, I'm, I'm real slow to just dismiss all of it, but I do understand that the system has probably gotten a little bogged down. You know, apparently back in the day, it was pretty easy to have a conversation with Vince. And now the story is that's not always the case. I mean, maybe it is if you're Roman reigns, but supposedly back in the day, you know, he was, he was on the plane with everybody, you know, flying commercial and they were carpooling. Thank God this Prince IK match is over. (laughs) It wasn't that bad of a match, Conrad. No, it wasn't. Listen, we've had a lot of fun giving Prince IK a shit. I, I hated the fact that they put him in a bad spot. He, to me is like. You know, one of the more misused talents. It's not necessarily yep. his fault. I hated the position he was put in, much like Goldberg. Uh, 